Well, let's consider another um, simple molecule and see how resonance might affect it. Here is um, vinyl chloride, two carbon atoms that have a double bond bonded to chlorine. This will have two hydrogen atoms. Now, you should realize from watching our previous videos and probably what you know from your general chemistry background, these two carbons are sp2 hybridized. The chlorine is unhybridized. Remember for the halogens we have for the orbital block diagram for chlorine 2s 2p and then a pair of electrons here, a pair here, a pair here, and a single electron here. So there's no hybridization. This p orbital from chlorine overlaps an sp2 orbital with this carbon. So in the Lewis diagram, we would have these dots, the 2s electron, and then we have the two lone pair of p electrons. And that's vanilla chloride. Um, everything has an octet. It should be perfectly fine. But if we compare the bond strength of vanilla chloride with ethyl chloride, with this molecule, it turns out this bond here is significantly stronger than this carbon chloride bond here. So again, we have a resonance type situation. Before we draw the Lewis structures, let's try to draw schematically what's happening. Here we have carbon, carbon. We have this pi bond. So we have a carbon atom. and then an adjacent carbon atom. With some overlapping here and they p lobes so that this puts up an electron where they overlap and so does this one. And you have that over laterally overlapping p orbitals sharing a pair of electrons, one from each carbon and that's the double bond. Then we have, of course, the sigma bond connecting them, and then the bond to chlorine. And chlorine now has two p orbitals, each containing a pair of electrons. We'll just draw one of them. Like this. Now what happens is that here we have adjacent p orbitals on the carbons and the chlorine here. And it turns out that these 1, 2, 3, 4 electrons end up being shared amongst these three different carbon atoms. So the situation is more like this. There's not a really an overlapping, a lateral overlapping as you have with a genuine pi bond, but rather be something like this. Again, and this has a lone pair of electrons, the chlorine does. And you have this electron delocalization so that these four electrons are just being shared amongst, somewhat being shared amongst these three atoms here. So it's not a, it's not a double bond that exists with these pi electron orbitals, but it's not a single bond either. It's sort of in between them. So 
On the Lua structures now, the canonical forms, we show it like this. Here, these carbons are, in this double bond, the carbons are sharing a pair of pi electrons. Well, suppose that this carbon kept both of the pi electrons for itself. So then there would be no double bond, there would be no pi bond there. That would have a negative charge. And that would have a p orbital with a lone pair of electrons. This would have an empty p orbital, so that would have a positive charge. But chlorine is right next to it, and that has a p orbital with a lone pair of electrons. So suppose that we have a double bond here formed because chlorine puts up both of the electrons for the bond. Then we'd have a double bond here. But the carbon would have a negative charge. There's a double bond sharing electrons, but carbon didn't donate any electrons. Chlorine did. And chlorine would have a positive charge. So let's go back. Keeping this in mind, we had it like this. That's one structure, perfectly reasonable structure. Then we said, well, we can go like this then, giving this a negative charge. No pi bond now. Leaving this with a positive charge, but now this comes down. So this carbon had a positive charge when this kept both the electrons, but this put up both electrons giving it a negative charge, so the negative and the positive negate each other. That has no charge, but the chlorine has a positive charge. So the Lewis structures or the kinetical forms are like this. We start with a perfectly reasonable molecule, if you will, and now we have a single bond here with a negative charge on this carbon atom, a double bond here with a positive charge on the chlorine atom. But again, the way that we got to there was just reshuffling the uh, p orbital pi electrons. Instead of being shared between these two carbons, this carbon kept both of them. And then this chlorine had this lone electron pair which is now sharing with the carbon, giving this a positive charge and a double bond. That's how we would draw the Lewis diagram. Then we'd realize, well, the bond between carbon and chlorine is neither single nor is it double. It's somewhat in between. But that does explain, then, why the vinyl carbon chlorine bond is stronger than when you just have ethyl chloride. Like this, you have a partial positive bond. So we're showing that in the canonical forms here like this, but really the best way to try to picture it in your mind is to go back to here, knowing that these are sp2 hybridized, knowing that you have a pi bond here, meaning that you have p orbitals with electrons. Here we have it here, though. This chlorine has a p orbital with a lone pair of electrons. And what's happening is these electrons, all four of them, are being delocalized and shared amongst three atoms. So you don't have um, a bona fide pi bond being formed, you sort of like have a bond, the sigma bond, and then a fraction of a bond. 
beyond that. But that means, though, that this is more than just a single bond, which accounts then for the extra strength it has compared to ethyl chloride. But again, we want to be thinking of this is then is more true to what's happening. Here, we have to think how are we going to draw the different Lewis structures, the different canonical forms. And that's important, because the more canonical forms we can draw for a molecule, the more stable it's going to be. So we're looking here, and we can say, well, this is sharing a pair of electrons. This might keep both of them. And then this one here, with its lone pair of, of uh, pi electrons, can swing down so that instead of having the double bond here, the double bond is over here. And again, in your textbook, when they write out these different Lewis structures, you see this double arrow between them. That does not mean that the molecule is shifting between a single bond and a double bond. What this is supposed to represent is this situation here, where we have the electron delocalization, where we have, in fact, four pi electrons being shared amongst three different atoms. So we have the sigma bond, but then we don't have a genuine pi bond. We just have the sharing effect, which sort of generates a, a partial pi bond. And that's what we're trying to show here by showing the pi bond occurring in different positions on different molecules. And again, the more practice you get with this, then uh, the more comfortable you get. So that, again, is another simple molecule to illustrate the importance of resonance. Uh, and the next video, we'll consider another simple molecule, just carbon dioxide and how resonance can add stability to that molecule as well.